Welcome to Ask the Expert, where we bring you the top experts on dog health, training, grooming, and more. For the next half hour, we you ask it and we'll answer it. I'm Marissa Sarbach. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's topic is stress and anxiety. It affects everyone, and your dog is no exception. So here in the studio to help us de-stress is AKC Chief Veterinary Officer, Dr. Jerry Klein. Dr. Klein has been an emergency and critical care veterinarian for 35 years plus, and we always learn so much when he drops by. We love having him. So if this is your first time watching the show, sending us your questions is very, very simple. Just go to facebook.com slash American Kennel Club and comment on this video. Chances are your question will get answered, so don't be shy. We are here to help and we love hearing your questions. So our topic for today is what is anxiety? We want to talk about that in a broad sense if you can explain it for us. Well, sure. Uh, you know, people say, well, what do dogs have to be anxious about or fearful? Well, you know, they basically feelings of security and safety, their life, you know, their basics. Uh, and many times we don't know the complete background of the dogs that we have. You know, if you get them as puppies, you certainly do. But if you get an older dog from an unknown source, you have no idea what happened to them. So a dog becomes anxious because they don't perceive something the way they understand things to be. And so they get stressed from that. Now, Dr. Klein, is there a difference when we use the words fear, stress, or anxiety? Is there a difference or can they be used interchangeably? Uh, technically, there is some differences, although it becomes kind of uh, murky at some point. But fear usually involves some kind of escape behavior. You know, they're going to run away from something. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is a sensation of a, or a feeling from a dog's point of view that these actions are uncontrollable or unchangeable, which leads to stress. In their point of view, that's, they can't understand it. You know, and fireworks, for example, on the 4th of July or thunder and lightning, you know, they don't understand that it's its nature. Eventually they would, but at that time they become anxious and stressed. And is there a difference in human anxiety versus dog anxiety? Uh, not really. I mean, certainly the, the major difference to people, we can try to explain mm -hmm. what might be going on. But even in those cases, in humans, they have phobias and they know they can't, they should be able to leave the house, but they still don't want to. Well, you can imagine from an animal's point of view, you can't explain that aspect of it. Separation anxiety, for example. I'm just going out to get you know, the laundry or something. <laughs> I'll be back, I promise. I'll be back. I'm not leaving you for the rest of your life. And most dogs get it, but some dogs have a harder time getting that point. And that probably, to that point, makes it more difficult for an owner or a veterinarian to even treat because the dog can't tell you what it's feeling. Right, and I think we rely on a couple of things. First of all, it depends certainly on the owner, mm -hmm. uh, how much experience they've had in having dogs before. And I think certainly a novice owner with a dog that may have an unknown background can be kind of difficult and frustrating uh, for the owner, for the dog, for the veterinarian and or trainer or behavioralist. For everybody so, but, yeah, involved. It does. And well, the reason that's problematic is because you want everyone to be happy, of course, you know, and what you don't want is an animal to be surrendered or, you know, we don't want it anymore because we can't handle this anymore. So there are certain things, you know, you just try to get certain behavior corrected as soon as possible and you start certain habits. You know, I always tell people you don't uh, have a dog do what you don't want it to do later on. If you don't like, you know, acting a certain way, you want to stop the behavior as soon as you can. The earlier the better. The earlier the better yeah. because things become ingrained and the longer things go on, the harder it is to change that type of behavior. So for people who are just joining us, I just want to remind them you can join in. We want to hear your questions. We have our AKC Chief Veterinary Officer here in-house with us in studio. Very excited to have him, Dr. Jerry Klein. He's been a veterinarian for over 35 years. He can answer all of your questions. We are covering stress and anxiety with your dogs today. So comment on the Facebook questions below, post them there, and we'll read them on air. So Dr. Klein would love to know, how can I tell if my dog has anxiety? Well. The usual reasons the dogs become anxious, they, they don't want to relax or rest. Uh, they'll whine, they'll pace, they'll pant excessively. Uh, if they get extreme, you know, they, their pupils dilate, their hackles can go up. But basically a dog doesn't settle down. And it, usually that's a sign that the dog is anxious or fearful of something. Now, so these are a few symptoms that you would say, maybe excessive barking or panting, dilated pupils, anything like that? Yeah, those are all kind of things that uh, escape behavior. Uh, 
basically refusing to or unable to relax and just basically enjoy the situation that they're in because they just don't understand and they fear what's happening next. And would you say that different breeds are affected more by anxiety in your experience? I think though it can happen to dogs of any breed or any breed type. We do know in humans, for example, there is a genetic basis for certain levels of anxiety. And I think in certain dog breeds also have some kind of predisposition for certain levels of anxiety and stress as well. I think in certain groups of dogs, the ones that are protectors, like said herding animals, they want to have control over something. It's an incredible thing. It's amazing that they're they're ability to want to control and protect mm -hmm. in some ways makes them more vulnerable to being left alone and not having something to protect. It's I'm kind of pathetic in a way, but you love them so much and you can't explain it to them. But certain breeds like that, the herding breeds can be a little bit difficult, but it can happen to dogs of any type. And I'm being told by our producers that we do have our first question, um, so we're going to bring that up on screen for you. But one woman is asking, our dog has anxiety and constantly is licking her leg to the point of it getting raw. Uh, we have to keep her, we want to keep, we really want to keep her and we would like to stop that. Well, uh, yeah, first of all, that can be behavioral. First, you want to make sure you have the dog checked out by a veterinarian to make sure there's not a medical reason for behind it. There's not an infection or some other kind of a problem. But that can be kind of a, a, a thing that with behavior modification you can change. They have uh, topical uh, uh, ointments that you can apply that don't taste good. Mm -hmm. Some dogs have, were required to have a cone on them for a while. You have to basically stop that. They have medications and you can resort to that, but you have to work with your veterinarian, make sure there's not a medical reason first. But yes, they can do self-mutilation. Are you seeing a lot of different causes of anxiety and fear in dogs? I think life basically is, it doesn't change too much, but the difference is that uh, some dogs get bored and because I think our lives have changed in some ways. So the way we treat our dogs, you know, sometimes leave them at home without anything to do, lets their minds wander. And I think a dog that doesn't have a job to do or a purpose is more anxious and stressed about the basic things when they should be occupied. So has life changed? I think it's changed for all of us and our animals second as well. And I think it also, that's a reason that it's important that you understand the type of dog that you have. If you have a dog that's for, a, let's say a sledding dog and very active, mm -hmm. to keep them cooped up you know, when they have nothing else to do, they're gonna find destructive behavior, they're gonna be stressed, they don't know what to do, their mind is gonna wander and do some other things. So it's important to try to develop a certain kind of, our lives have to change as well as our dog's lives too. Absolutely. Yeah. We are having our next question, so I want to bring that up on screen for you. Nancy Luttrell is saying, my mini dachshund is usually fine, but fireworks, as I know you mentioned before, fireworks, outside terrify her. Any recommendations? Her other dachshund sleeps right through. I think that's, you know, such an incredible question because my dogs hate the fireworks. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it happens to all of us. It's pretty common. It's very common. They don't understand it. They hear things much more acutely than we do. So it's loud to us. It's even louder to them because that's much, much more sensitive to it. Uh, they say there's several things that you can try doing, you know, uh, turning on the TV, putting cotton balls in dogs' ears. But I don't know how much all that works. They do have... Uh, garments like like thunder shirts where they put them on because the sensation of on a dog's side you know uh, they feel it calms them mm -hmm. and so they make things online that you can purchase to ease a dog's feel and the good thing about certain things like fireworks fourth of july or even thunderstorms in this day and age we know things are coming that's true whether it's a weather forecast mm -hmm. or a holiday it's not a huge surprise the fourth of july is coming on the fourth <laughs> of july and then the storm is coming, we usually have usually pretty good indication. Mm -hmm. So to be caught off guard, it sometimes can happen. But thankfully now we have a little bit of a, a heads up that we can try to do things to avert it as much as possible. So preparation really is gonna be key. Yeah, and I think they do make things. And like I said, those uh, people, have, uh, usually not everything will work for every dog, but there, there are options for every dog. All right, great. Our next Facebook question is coming through. John Courtney says, what can I teach my Shih Tzu who has separation anxiety? Does that vary dep depending on breeds, how you treat it? No, I mean, basically it's, it's behavior modification. Uh, first of all, it's hard to say if a dog is, I believe in crate training a dog uh, for housebreaking and also as a way for them to have their own space. Uh, if this 
dog doesn't have one, they might want to consider just getting him used to a somewhat crate or a, a cage, and large enough that he can relax and he or she and put their dog in food, food and water bowl in it. Mm -hmm. And in nature, when dogs are basically want to find some kind of solace and peace, they go into some kind of quiet, secluded area. So for them, it's like a, their own little con mm -hmm. tiny condo. So that would be a place to start. But the other thing is to change your behavior. If you do your same kind of like, you pick up your keys and you leave the door, and then your dog anticipates that. So you have to start changing your, your way of doing things. So pick up your keys and then don't leave and just mm -hmm. sit down. Or sometimes don't pick up, just walk outside and come back in. You, or go out a different door. And then when you come back in, don't make a big deal of the fact you're gone and you have been gone. Uh, they also make puzzles for, you know, and treats that you can give dogs you know, before you leave to keep them occupied. And you have to work, be patient, first of all. It's not a quick fix. It's not going to all of a sudden, in one day, it's going to work out. It may take days and sometimes weeks. And you, you have to start in increments. Leave them alone for a couple of minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. And then pray, you know, when he settles down. And then you know, let him do something that shows them that you've done the right thing. They need some kind of confidence. So these are all ways that basically people can treat their dog's anxiety and fear at home. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are other ways as well. You should always check with your veterinarian to make sure that there's not medical issues related to whatever's causing the stress. But that being said, if there isn't, there's always options to go to outside sources. Well, it sounds like there are a lot of great ideas and things on the market now yeah. that will help you in addition to what you were saying, just knowing that we know that the 4th of July is coming. So when these things arise, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Uh, well, there, amazingly, there's even uh, pheromone type uh, sprays uh, that have calming influences on dogs. And you spray ahead of time, and supposedly it mimics the sensations and uh, sense of when they're uh, with their mother. Mm. And so you can spray certain areas prior to it happening, and it has certain levels of success. And I think it's a great no a way of knowing it. That's way ahead of time what we did, knew about you know 10 years ago. So hopefully we're making progress and leaps and bounds on this. And that's helping the owners, the veterinarians, right. and most importantly, the, the dogs. dogs. Yeah. You want the dogs to be happy. Great. Yeah. So if you're just joining us, thank you so much for doing so. We are here in studio live with Dr. Jerry Klein. He's our AKC Chief Veterinary Officer. We are taking your Facebook questions live on the air right now. I'm going to take one for Dr. Klein. Anita Lemon is wondering, my five-year-old German Shepherd dog can't stand to be separated from me. My two-year-old German Shepherd dog attacks her when she gets excited to intimidate her and they won't stop barking. Would you consider that stress anxiety? Uh, well, certainly the one dog has separation anxiety and I think it's not uncommon for German Shepherds to display that. They become extremely devoted to a person or persons and separation for them is really difficult. Uh, the other dog is reacting to the one dog acting the other way, so she has a little bit of a, a problem there. I think basic obedience training has to happen. She probably needs to s maybe seek advice from obedience training on, on one or both of them, uh, a way of separating them so the one doesn't harm the other one, uh, and the one doesn't harm itself when she's gone. So this is this something that you'd say you see often? I think you hear about it. You know, people will come in, a lot of times they put up with it because they just think they, they can. And then when they finally reach a certain point, then they come to, to me or someone else. And I think it's important to, if you have any questions to share with your veterinarian or if you got your dog from a responsible breeder, it's a perfect time to call the breeder and say, well, here's what's going on. Is this common? What should I do? Do you have any like clues? And you know, there's advice out there. Of course, the internet is always full of advice and, <laughs> you know, and some of it good and some of it not so good. Uh, but I think a veterinarian is certainly your starting point and a responsible breeder as well, which is one of the advantages of getting a dog from a responsible breeder. If you get a dog from a shelter, it's certainly not, not a way out, but just have to kind of seek other ways of kind of figuring those problems out. And our next Facebook question is here. I'll pull it up on my screen and there we go. Diane is wondering, what do you think of CBD oil? Well, that's one of the hottest topics. I get asked about CBD all the time. Unfortunately, I can't recommend it because it's not approved with no scientific data. It's only anecdotal evidence. There's no regulation on the product. We don't know the, the purity or the concentration on certain things. And from a vet's point of view, do no harm. Do I know that two drops on a six pound Chihuahua versus four drops mm -hmm. on a 200 pound Newfoundland will cause the same kind of effects? And it can be very dangerous and veterinarians are not encouraged to recommend or dosing or yeah, even prescribing that. So at this time, I can't condone that. 
All right. And last question, at what point do you go to a vet with problems of your dog's anxiety or stress? What would be that point for you? I think when it disrupts your, the basic life or the dog starts doing harm to itself, to its surroundings, to its uh, neighbors or community, then it becomes an issue. Uh, if it harms itself, and then it's time to seek help. Uh, well, Dr. Klein, also Valentine's Day is coming up. So what are some quick tips for dog owners that you would say, keep in mind how to handle the holidays Well, safely? the big thing about Valentine's Day is chocolate. You know, I think keep those big boxes of chocolates off the coffee table because it's right at their level. And not every piece of chocolate is going to be a death sentence, but certainly if they eat a lot of chocolate and if it's dark chocolate and if it's a small dog, it could be a trip to the emergency room. So if you get chocolates, keep it out of their level so they can't get it. Perfect. Anything else we should keep in mind? Valentine's Day right around the corner there. Uh, it's enjoy the roses. Uh, great. Thank you so much. Always great to have you. Uh, so thank you so much about stress, anxiety. We've covered a lot of topics today. Next week on Ask the Expert, we will have our favorite dog trainer, Kathy Santo, on the show. She'll be telling us all about how to handle dog training saboteurs in your life. But don't worry, there is plenty to tide you over until then. You can catch us this Friday at 11 a.m. for the grand opening of the Museum of the Dog. We have been waiting a long time for this. And we have an all new AKC Dog Center Friday at noon. Then you can catch our live stream of the Progressive Dog Show Friday at 4.15. Be sure to download AKC TV on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Marissa Sarbak. Thank you for joining us. AKC TV, sit, stay, watch.